Welcome to Higher Impact, where we're motivating you toward bigger, greater, and better. I'm your host, Teresa Harrison. Thanks for tuning in. The month of February is recognized as Black History Month, when the nation pauses to remember the incredible achievements of African Americans. On this special episode, we salute the next generation of gospel artists, but specifically those who have stayed connected to the father of gospel music, Professor Thomas A. Dorsey. Back in the 1930s, Dorsey was known as Georgia Tom, a blues composer and pianist. After a spiritual conversion, he began writing songs that he called gospels. Of course, the most famous song he wrote was Precious Lord. In 1933, Professor Thomas A. Dorsey founded the National Convention of Gospel Choirs and Choruses, an organization that taught and trained gospel songwriters and singers. 88 years later, Professor Thomas Dorsey is no longer with us, but his organization is still going strong thanks to its current president, Dr. Maribeth Gentry. Although the Dorsey Convention is the oldest gospel music organization, many of gospel's young talents are finding opportunities to grow and flourish by staying connected with it. Tonight, we'll talk to Jeffrey Golden, winner of season seven of Sunday Best. We'll also hear from Jason Claiborne and Jesse Williams, two of gospel's hottest songwriters and new artists. But first, Let's check in with one of the great vocalists in the gospel genre, Micah Stampley. We've, we've loved his singing for years, but who knew he could cook? Yes, you heard me. He's a phenomenal cook. Micah and his wife, Heidi, have a new beignet mix that's being offered on walmart.com. However, getting to the launch of the new venture has not been without a struggle. In January of last year, Micah and Heidi's daughter, Mary, passed away. But with unshakable faith, they're moving forward in life, love, and business. This new beignet venture, uh, what's that all about? Uh, well, you know, being from Louisiana, cooking is just kind of like in our blood, you know. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, we used to host parties and Christmas parties and things like that here at home. And Heidi and I would not hire caterers, so we did all the cooking. Mm -hmm. And people were always talking about, y'all need a restaurant, y'all need a restaurant. And um, <laughs> that's always been a dream of Heidi's. Um, not so much, you know, so much me, <laughs> but um, I think getting in the kitchen and cooking for thousands of people began to take the passion away from me, from, from mm -hmm. the creative side. And so... Um, you know, we really had to get some employees in there to kind of like take over that spot because I, I couldn't do it. I had other things going on in my life. <laughs> but this has been a very rewarding journey for us. Um, and um, now here, you know, in the middle of a pandemic here, we started a brand new company, right? A food company, Orleans Foods. Okay. And so, you know, after Mary um, passed away, after she transitioned um, in October, we tried to hold the cafe together, but emotionally we were a wreck. And yeah. so we decided to go ahead and close it in December. It was December the 30th, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh huh. And, and your so, cafe was located in, in uh, Georgia? Yeah, Fayetteville. 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 Georgia. Okay. And um, we served a lot of people. We even served some of the actors um, uh -huh. at Pinewood Studios, some of the Avengers. Um, you talk about Keisha and I pulling will come in every now and then. Mm -hmm, Most mm -hmm. people know her as Rudy Huxtable. <laughs> yeah, right. She would come in. So we we served a lot of people. It was really, really cool to see that. Yes. Um, and so now we have partnered with uh, a company who wants to um, license or uh, sort of like franchise our mm -hmm. model. Uh, so starting out with our flagship product, which is the beignets. Uh, so, so now are they so, going to be uh, franchising the restaurant concepts or just the beignets? Eventually, because of COVID, mm -hmm. um, they're okay. unable to really like, you know, do the whole model right now um, in, okay. in, you know, in, in dine-in restaurants. So right. right now we're doing um, um, the catering side delivery and yeah. you can do a um, a grab and go type situation uh -huh. with the concept. Okay. So 
going to be easy for people to get the products. And uh, but right now, it's just the beignets uh, at the moment. And we are literally, we're going to branch out and start um, adding some of the other items that we served at the cafe. Oh, great. So the beignet mix is a product. And it, is it going to be available in Walmart? Yeah, well, right now, Walmart, uh, which was a miracle in itself, because in order to get on their website, you have yeah. to have years of uh, a track record and thousands yeah. of dollars in revenue already. Yeah. And we right. were brand new. We literally started the company, applied, and maybe a glitch or something happened in their system, and we got the <laughs> better. We got the we'll call order. it favor, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and That's amazing. We're on Walmart.com. Uh, we're not actually in the physical stores yet. Uh -huh. Okay. Yet, but uh, okay. we're getting there. Wow, those beignets are fantastic. BooksToLiveBy.com helps you publish your passion. If you've got a book in your head or heart, allow BooksToLiveBy.com to help you get it out and into the hands of the masses. Join other writers who have become published authors with Books to Live By. BooksToLiveBy.com offers publishing consultation as well as full ghostwriting services. Professional and priced right with ministry in mind. Remember, ministry comes in different formats. Contact us today and allow us to help make your publishing dreams come true. Impact, where urban family, faith, lifestyle, entertainment, culture, collide, all here on Impact. Gospel Today, it was the number one magazine for the urban Christian. For me, what was unique about it was you could pick up and look at the fashion trends, who the hottest artists were, uh, where the conferences were happening, and what you know pastors were doing for their congregation to meet their needs. So you could get all that information in a place and you knew it was accurate and reliable. Get the new book that tells this incredible story at bookstoliveby.com. One of the great artists that has come out of the Dorsey Convention is Jesse Williams. Welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Harrison. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And I'm excited that you have a new release and you're doing amazing things. Tell me, where do you live in the country? I live in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, and do yes, you, serve, you serve in a ministry? Yes, I do. I'm the praise and worship leader at my church, Fresh Anointing. And my pastor is none other than the great Michael Lampkin. All right. And so you've been involved. I know you're pretty young. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 35 years old. Okay. Yes. So you've been involved in gospel music for how long? Oh, all my life. My all family my has life. been in music. My, my grandfather was a pastor, so music was in my life the entire time. Yes. And so what does a young person, because the Thomas A. Dorsey Convention basically celebrates the founder's music, and his music is, my goodness, uh, almost 100 years old. Yes, yes, yes. So and how the does a young person still find um, that the, the father of gospel music, Thomas Dorsey, still has relevance? Yes, re relevant in our music today as writers, those that are coming up in the convention. Yes, we all have a solid foundation that Dr. Dorsey has laid, and I'm excited to be following in those footsteps. So tell me about uh, the new project and the upcoming things that you're doing. I know COVID has a shutdown, but not shut out. So that's right. We're still doing vision in COVID. We are still doing purpose. So we are still working. So um, all that I need was a song that I wrote uh, a few years back and I presented to the Dorsey Convention. The Dorsey Convention is a wonderful platform for up and, cut of up and coming writers and artists. And I actually, at that time, Dr. Harrison, I took a piece of the song to the convention because I actually wasn't done writing it. 
and the Lord did wonders with it. Uh, Donnie McClurkin grabbed the mic and sung a piece of it. I mean, yeah. the Lord just really did amazing things. Now, if you're a fan of gospel music, you've probably tuned in to Sunday Best, which has introduced the world to many of gospel's new artists. One of them is season seven winner, Jeffrey Golden. Welcome to Higher Impact, Jeffrey Golden, one of the great voices, the golden voices of gospel music. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Harrison. Such an honor uh, to be on this program with you. And I just want to say thank you for everything um, that you do for the kingdom of God. <laughs> thank you so much. So listen, we didn't even know who you were 10 years ago. <laughs> you just came out of nowhere and blew everybody uh, out of the water. I mean, Sunday Best really put you on the map, right? Wow, uh, definitely. Um, uh, you know, I was used to just uh, you know, serving. Um, uh, my uh, uh, my father's been a pastor my whole life, uh, so I would just you know um, sing there. Uh, uh, you know, I would just uh, you know literally um, uh, lead our choir. Uh, I would be yes. uh, introducing songs uh, to the team. Um, I remember when I was younger, uh, there would be times that I would you know um, write songs and I would bring them. Um, uh, uh, to our choir at church, um, and they would say, "Oh, Jeff, is this another one of them songs you made up?" <laughs> you know, and so uh, you know, so that 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 was my life. Um, being faithful, um, uh, in my city, being faithful at my church, um, and then literally God just did it with Sunday Best. But when I think about my journey, I always think about David. You know, um, because he was faithful serving his father's sheep. Um, and while other people didn't know who he was, he was known by God because God was taking him through processes that nobody else saw. But when it was time for Goliath, he was ready. That's good. That's really good. And so as you have been positioned now, you have a new record label and a new family. You're just doing all kinds of great things. Tell me about this record label and just your evolution over the last couple of years. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much. Um, so in 2015, I uh, released my first album, Kingdom Live, with uh, For Your Soul Recordings, RCA. Um, God was just uh, so faithful with that project. Um, but in 2016, uh, we found out that we were going to be parting ways with the label. And so um, I just started to pray, okay, Lord, um, what do we do next? You know, is, right. it, is it independent? Is it a, uh, you know, different label? Um, um, and I, and I sensed that, uh, God asked me, he said, why do you need a label? Um, and I said, well, Lord, for the backing. And he says, I am your backing. Um, wow. and it's literally in that season, uh, that, that, uh, that me, um, and my two older brothers, we just began to talk, um, and just say, Hey, what would it look like for us to really launch something, you know, uh, ourselves, you know, again, we had all grown up, um, uh, uh in church, uh, doing music together. Um, uh, we had grown up also uh, in the uh, in the Thomas Dorsey convention together, you know, and so uh, my mom would take us there. And so we had been doing music. And then one of my older brothers uh, is actually the current director of the Howard Gospel Choir. He's been there probably, probably close to 10 years. Um, so he was doing that. God was really, you know, blessing him. Uh, then our, our oldest brother was an awesome music producer, uh, uh, music director in his own right. And so we said, okay, we've been kind of doing, uh, you know, we've been doing uh, our own thing in our own circles. Um, but, you know, what would it look like for us to come together, you know, um, like when we were younger? And so uh, that's what we did. And um, God has been so faithful. And so this album that I just released, uh, Sea Revival, is actually the first full-length album from uh, the Golden Brothers Music Group. And so we're just excited for everything that God has for us. Um, you know, we don't necessarily know uh, what's going to come next. You know, it might be uh, uh, other artists, you know, that we might have a chance to work with. Uh, but certainly we're excited about just doing whatever it is that God gives us to do. You, you have a great vision. You said the Golden Brothers is the name of the label? Yes, ma'am. The Golden Brothers. And so if somebody's interested and they want you to pick them up and, and market mm -hmm. them and record them, you, you guys are open for that, huh? Wow. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, now, right how old now, are you? How old are you? Yeah, I'm uh, 26. Ooh, oh, yeah, my goodness. That is amazing. So what's new in gospel music now in your generation? What is your generation doing that's so different from previous generations? Wow. That's such an awesome question. Um, I think if there's anything that's new with our generation, well, first, I think um, it's important uh, just to be said that there is a legacy and a heritage with gospel music um, that we are standing on. You know, um, uh, you know when uh, when a Kirk Franklin came out, uh, you know there were some church folks who were saying, you know, that's worldly music. You know, don't you bring that in church? 
not recognizing that he was literally carrying the mantle of Thomas A. Dorsey because um, uh, uh, when he first started writing, you know, he's the father of gospel music. He was taking the sacred message of Jesus Christ and fusing it with the sound of his time, which was the blues. And so literally as, as there were people in his time saying this is worldly music, you know, then by the time we got to Kirk, they're saying, well, Thomas Dorsey is, you know, church music and now Kirk is worldly music. Um, um, and so I think that what our generation is doing um, is just carrying that same mantle. Uh, we say we have this eternal, timeless, sacred message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're gonna take that and then we're gonna take the sound of our time and then we're just gonna see what happens. Um, uh, but one thing that I think is very interesting with our age, with our time, um, is I think there has been this, this huge effort um, to really see a uh, black gospel artist um, with white Christian artists, you know, to see how can our sound um, not not merge per se, but how can we begin to create a space where where, where literally multi ethnically we can come together in worship? Um, and I think there's been so much. So, so so many issues, so much schism, um, but I believe that that is something that God is doing. But I will say that our generation has to be careful that we don't lose what we've received while we're trying to branch into the new. We've got to find a way to preserve what we have, but then also carry it now into this new audience that God is giving us a chance to reach. Books to Live by .com helps you publish your passion. If you've got a book in your head or heart, allow Books to Live by .com to help you get it out and into the hands of the masses. Join other writers who have become published authors with Books to Live by. Books to Live by .com offers publishing consultation as well as full ghostwriting services. Professional and priced right with ministry in mind. Remember, ministry comes in different formats. Contact us today and allow us to help make your publishing dreams come true. Gospel Today, it was the number one magazine for the urban Christian. For me, what was unique about it was you could pick up and look at the fashion trends, who the hottest artists were, uh, where the conferences were happening, and what you know pastors were doing for their congregation to meet their needs. So you could get all that information in a place and you knew it was accurate and reliable. Get the new book that tells this incredible story at bookstoliveby.com. Your Impact Network has gone mobile. Now we'll be there wherever you are, whenever you need us. Our brand new app allows you to stream our complete lineup of preaching, ministry, and music 24-7. All of your favorite programs in the palm of your hand and just a click away. Impact's app features our content schedule for quick and easy searching and a Bible reading plan so you never miss daily devotions. We also have a brand new video on demand section so you can enjoy what you want exactly when you want. Regardless of your circumstance, the Impact Network will provide the ministry programs desired. Our goal is to have a positive impact on you and the lives of others. We also have an easy to use support button, allowing you to donate quickly, partnering with us as we preach the gospel around the world. Your Impact Network is now available in the App Store on all mobile platforms. Download it today and tell your friends. Well, welcome back to Higher Impact. I am with a phenomenal musician and artist and songwriter, Mr. Jason Claiborne. Welcome. Hey, Doc. How are you doing? Good. Uh, thank you for having me. And I'm just glad to be here. Glad to yes. be here. Yes. So, Jason, I know we've been shut down, but we haven't been shut out. You've been making music Come even on. while the shutdown is happening. And um, yeah. tell me what you've been up to. Oh, well, um, you know, I signed with Ty Scott about um, right before the pandemic, which is crazy. So, you know, have been writing for all of these artists for years and uh, finally got my opportunity for everybody to, you know, see where all of the, the songs that they've been singing in their churches for the last eight to 10 years of, of, of mine, connecting it to my name. And right when it happened, the pandemic hit. So um, it's crazy, but um, God is good. Um, I uh, put out a single called Praise Belongs to You. Uh, me and the Atmosphere Changers uh, label wanted me to, to, to do a choir album first. So yes. I, had this group, I had this group of young adults that are just amazing. And from my church uh, youth choir from back in the day, I had about 200 young people in my youth choir. Wow. Uh, so now what church, what church and where is it located? 
Uh, St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, wherever Dr. Kevin W. Cosby is my pastor. All right, let's do this yeah, shout yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout out, shout out to my church. I love my church. They've supported me so much. Um, yeah. And so I took, uh, as you know, as everybody grew up and, uh, and um, the choir kind of doing the down, I took a portion of them and made the atmosphere changes. And every time this group of young adults would get together and sing, they would just change the room change the atmosphere of the room. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna name y'all the atmosphere changes. So that's where the name came from. And um, so we put out a single called Praise Belongs to You and shot a music video to it. And it went top 30 on Billboard during the pandemic. So then the amazing. label was like, I, I'm amazing. And uh, then the label was like, well, we need to have something else out. So why don't you pick another song off the record? I had turned my record in in February of, uh, of 2020. And I, it was done in December. And um, and so the late, I was like, well, let's put out Creator. So we dropped Creator and we dropped a music video. So I had been following the secular industry on how they promoted their, their stuff. So I was like, well, everybody's putting visuals out with the song. So let me go drop a music video um, and drop a song. Every time I drop a song, I got a music video to it. So it was bananas. So we dropped Creator and then we dropped God Made It Beautiful um, uh, featuring my sister, Daria Raymore, and dropped a video to it. And I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, where all of the Breonna Taylor stuff happened. I've been out protesting and all of that um, and a part of my city. And it's been crazy, still crazy, a lot going on. And uh, so we decided to put some scenes of, of what was going on, not just the bad stuff, but the, the fact that there were people out there um, really praying for the cops and and trying to you know you know keep peace and so yeah. we dropped that and uh, now we got a new single out featuring Bishop Harris. Well, what's the name of it? You're all I need. You're all so, I need. Yes. Yeah, so you're all I need. I oh, wrote so you. Bishop so I wrote it for Bishop Harris on the Soul yes. Out album. Yes. And so. I, I talked to the label, I said, hey, let's do something. It's never really been done in gospel music where the songwriter turned artist goes back and features the artist that made the song big. Look out for Jason Claiborne and the Atmosphere Changers. They are certainly shifting the trajectory of this new and improved gospel industry. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. As we continue to bring you more higher impact, I want to encourage you to let me know you're watching. Drop me a line on social media at Dr. T. Harrison or connect with me on my website at TeresaHarrison.com. As we leave you tonight, I want to issue a special and personal invitation to pick up a copy of my brand new book, Unstoppable, which tells the story of Gospel Today magazine. Order it now at bookstoliveby.com. I thank you in advance for your support. Listen, don't miss next week's show with my special guest for Women's History Month, Pastor Shirley Caesar. As we leave you, be blessed with the sounds of Jason Claiborne and the Atmosphere Changers with Creator. God, we realize that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we're going to give you all glory because it goes to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you the atmosphere changes. Hey.
Jesus, and he controls it all. Let's go, Tack. Let's go. 